Hello, my name is Alex Stanley Stretch. I'm the marketing coordinator here at Hoffman Nursery. Today I'm joined by Stephen Gillis, who's our sales and customer service manager. And he will be sharing a presentation with us today on drought tolerant and low water use grasses and sedges. We believe that using these plants are smart choices and in some circumstances becoming a necessity. And with that, I will turn it over to Stephen for today's presentation. Thank you, Alex. Uh, we're excited to present this information to you. And I wanted to share just a little bit about Hoffman Nursery for those of you who aren't familiar with us and a little bit about myself before we get into the presentation. Uh, so Hoffman Nursery is a wholesale nursery based in Rougemont, North Carolina. We specialize in ornamental and native grasses, sedges, and grass-like plants. We offer 32, 72, and 18 count trays. And if you don't currently receive our availability, we encourage you to do so. We send it out monthly or weekly. It's also updated daily on our website at hoffmannursery.com. A little bit about myself, I'm a biogeographer by training with a Master of Science in Environmental Science from the University of Idaho, where my research focused on stream temperature sensitivity to climate change. Through my academic work, living and recreating in the West for 10 years, I was exposed to the hydrological challenges facing the region, which can be coarsely summarized in the saying, whiskey is for drinking, water is for fighting. But water issues aren't just limited to the West, and future climate scenarios indicate that changes in hydrological regimes will pose significant challenges for other regions where water demands will outpace supply for the foreseeable future. Even now, numerous states, including North Carolina, are experiencing drought conditions. So these realities necessitate the need for accurate water valuation and conservation, as well as recognizing the importance of low water use and drought tolerant grasses, sedges, and rushes for landscape applications. So this webinar supports our core purpose of promoting better living through plants, our catalog theme of resilience, as well as the design principles defined by the ASLA for creating resilient landscapes. Our core purpose and core values drive every interaction and thus our business. Understanding what we grow uh, will help you make good choices for low water use and drought tolerant landscapes. So we grow 140 different grasses, sedges, and grass-like species. About 30% are Carex with a 50-50 native to non-native product mix. We see an increasing interest in native grasses and sedges, plants that are used for nature-based solutions and in green infrastructure, as well as grasses for resilient landscapes. True grasses are in the genus Poaceae. They have the widest distribution of all flowering plant families, and they're adapted to survive in extreme conditions, largely because of their highly efficient fibrous root systems. Sedges are in the genus Carex. They're distributed throughout the world with groups from North America, Asia, and New Zealand. They also have fibrous root systems and they range from shade loving to sun tolerant. Rushes in the genus Juncaceae are also distributed throughout the world and they lend a stylish structure for a strong upright and architectural element in the landscape. They do prefer sun to part shade conditions in wet to moist areas, but they do tolerate bouts of dryness. And to help remember the difference between the three, there's the old rhyme, sedges have edges, rushes are round, and grasses have nodes or knees that bend to the ground. We talk about grasses, sedges, and rushes in relation to their growth cycle, whether they're cool or warm season. Having command of this information 
can assist you in making sound design choices that combine grasses of different growth cycles and dormancy. So your landscape has year round water wise interest. Warm season grasses are most active in summer and go dormant in winter. They thrive in intense summer sun and growth can be exponential during those times. Popular examples are Panicum, Penicetum, Schizocarium, and Muhlenbergia. Cool season grasses and sedges are most active in spring and fall and go dormant or semi-dormant in summertime. They can experience heat stress in hot, humid climates, and popular examples include Calamagrostis, Festuca, and Nacella. Grasses and sedges are excellent choices for providing solutions in resilient landscapes. They add movement, color, and texture. They're hosts for pollinators. They provide nesting material, nesting sites, and food for birds and small mammals. They also provide cover that allows for movement and foraging. And importantly, deer tend to avoid them which is an important maintenance consideration in many locations. They're also tolerant of low fertility and some selections tolerate pollutants and high salinity and salts. They're adapted to a wide pH range and they're great choices for progressive and pl matrix plantings. We think of them as having a short to-do list because many don't need fertilization they're relatively pest and disease free, and they only need to be cut back once a year for grasses in late spring or a, in late winter for a spring flush. And sedges only need to be cut back if necessary for looks. Grasses tend to use water efficiently. They readily take up water when present and many tolerate extended dry conditions, which is why we're here today but they also help to slow and filter stormwater runoff, increase infiltration, and reduce erosion. Grasses have desirable characteristics for landscape applications because of their adaptations, like extensive fibrous roots. This often re used, rarely referenced graphic from the Conservation Research Institute and Heidi Natura shows the root systems of prairie plants and grasses. On the far left is Kentucky bluegrass with top growth of less than a foot and root depth at less than a foot. On the far right is Budalua dactyloides, which also has very short top growth, but has a very extensive fibrous root system that extends down to seven or eight feet. These extensive root systems allow grasses to access nutrients and moisture to employ survival strategies like low water use and drought tolerance. There are a couple takeaways from this graphic that are key. One is that the below ground biomass for many of these prairie grasses is greater than the above ground biomass. Additionally, the below ground habitat created by spaces between the root hairs and root systems of these grasses is as important as the above ground habitat created by spaces between individual clumps. Mammals, insects, worms, nematodes, and bacteria all rely on the space created between root systems of these grasses below ground. So we know grasses can survive these dry conditions because of their adaptations and root systems. We can talk about what it means for these grasses to be either drought tolerant or low water use. Drought tolerant grasses do not need supplemental irrigation and can withstand prolonged dry conditions once established, but they may brown out, die back, wilt, lose foliage, flowers and seeds, or go dormant and disappear until sufficient moisture returns. Low water use grasses have adapted to water scarcity and use water efficiently. 
Once established, they may thrive during the hottest times of year without drastic changes to appearance. We've got 11 low water use grasses to cover, and it shouldn't be too much of a surprise that many of these grasses were original components of the short grass prairie, which was drier than the tall grass prairie or our Southwest natives. I'm not going to read these to you because they're in the presentation and we're gonna go over each one individually. First up is Budalua curtipendula or side oats gramma a warm season grass hardy to zone four that's a good choice for the seasonal interest and mid-height layer in a progressive planting design. This is a very tough, extremely attractive native grass that has dramatic hanging flowers that last all summer. When enough moisture is present, the seed heads emerge as purple and can change to tan as the summer progresses. This is a great choice for naturalized areas and meadows, erosion control, green roofs, and for meadow and prairie plantings. Next is Budalua dactyloides or buffalo grass, a warm season grass, cold hardy to zone four, suitable for the ground cover layer in a progressive planting design. The common name reflects this grass's role as forage for the American bison that once roamed the Great Plains. It was a major component of the short grass prairie and early settlers used it to construct their sod houses. It's also a really important host plant for larval skipper, green skipper butterflies. This is a grass that was trampled under hoof by hundreds of thousands of large mammals, an activity that stimulates this grass to throw stolons and spread and grow. Over time, this grass can create a dense, gray green to blue green carpet and it can handle foot traffic well. The seed heads are dis somewhat indistinct but they are a characteristic of the genus Budalua with a horizontal flag-like structure. That seed head is especially evident in Budalua gracilis or blue gramma grass. This is a warm season grass hardy to zone four suitable for the ground cover layer in a progressive planting design. This grass epitomizes the idea of resilience and it's the cover grass on our catalog this year. It's the state grass of Colorado and New Mexico and one of its common names is mosquito grass, which refers to the hovering flowers above the green grassy foliage. It grows naturally in dry prairies and is often found in rocky or clay soil. It's a great choice for erosion control, green roofs, lawn alternatives, and meadow and prairie plantings. Budalua gracilis, blonde ambition, is another warm season grass hardy to zone four, suitable for the ground cover or seasonal interest mid-height layer in a progressive planting design. This grass was discovered and introduced by the late great Dave Salmon of High Country Gardens. It was a 2011 plant select winner for its resistance to pests, exceptional performance in low water conditions, retail appeal, and long lasting attractiveness in gardens and containers. The blooms are taller than the straight species and emerge chartreuse and over the season turn to a blonde color where it gets its name from. It's another good choice for erosion control, green roofs, lawn alternatives, or meadow and prairie plantings. It's a unique looking native cultivar with season long interest. Up next is a familiar grass to many of you in Muhlenbergia capillaris or pink muley grass. A warm season grass that's hardy to zone six, it's appropriate for the seasonal interest and mid height layer in a progressive planting design. To me, this is one of the most exciting members of the grass world. It's sought after for several reasons. The spectacular pink plume color, fine textured foliage, movement in the wind, low water use, and undemanding nature. It's used extensively in highway medians, golf courses, and in home landscapes, as well as on steep banks because it requires little attention. Once established, it can remain 
semi-evergreen in certain locations, and it grows in a mound with erect blue-green foliage until September, when the spectacular billowing pink seed heads form. When it's planted in a mass, it will blow you away, and it's a great choice for erosion control, green roofs, and meadow and prairie plantings. Similar to pink muley grass is rose muley grass, or Muhlenbergia reversionii. A warm season grass, hardy to zone 5, and appropriate for the ground cover, seasonal interest, and mid-height layer. Rose muley has fine textured foliage and showy pink reddish blooms that are lighter and more airy than pink muley grass. It's smaller in stature and has softer foliage at well, as well. It occurs naturally in limestone soils and seeps from central Oklahoma to Texas and south to central Mexico. It's a very tough and adaptable plant that thrives in most soil conditions and handles wet conditions better than Muhlenbergia capillaris, so it can be a great choice for bioretention and rain gardens, as well as for meadow and prairie plantings. For people who are in zones where pink muley grass is an annual, Muhlenbergia reversionii can be a great perennial alternative. Next is a Southwest native in Muhlenbergia lindheimeri or Lindheimer's muley. It's a warm season grass, hardy to zone seven, a great choice for the seasonal interest and mid-height layer or the structural height layer in a progressive planting design. It grows in an erect clump with blue-gray fine foliage that reaches four feet in the summertime. And then pink tinted flowers add another foot. It's easy, undemanding, and very ornamental. It's one of my favorite grasses and has great movement in the wind, and it can be used as a specimen plant or it's spectacular in a sweep. It also makes a great screen and in certain applications in the south can be a good native substitute for Calamagrostis carl forester because it handles our hot, humid conditions a lot better than that grass. Nacella tenuesima, or Mexican feather grass, is a cool season grass hardy to zone seven. And it's good for the ground cover or seasonal interest and mid-height layer in a progressive planting design. It's the most fine textured grass we grow and has wispy, flowing, lime green foliage that when it's caught in the breeze is spectacular. It's a wonderful choice for containers and I have noticed that fireflies also really are drawn to Mexican feather grass. So it's a grass that does support pollinators and insects as well. It's a good choice for erosion control as well as for green roofs. It does reseed freely. So in the managed landscape, that's something to bear in mind. However, if you're more interested in persistence in the landscape, a grass that reseeds and spreads can be a fit feature. It just depends on your maintenance plan. Moving on to Sporobolus heteroleptus, or prairie drop seed. It's a warm season grass, hardy to zone four. It's great for the ground cover or seasonal interest layer. It was one of the major components of the Midwest prairie, and it's now a very popular landscape plant. It may be the most ornamental of the native prairie grasses. It grows in a clumping sheep shape with deep green, narrow leaves that arch downward but in the summertime, it sends up numerous stalks with delicate open panicles that shoot up over the clump. In fall, the foliage turns to a beautiful coppery orange color and later fades to cream. It makes a lush, gorgeous, mounding, undulating lawn alternative, and it has an interesting characteristic when the foliage is crushed that I think smells like buttered popcorn. Some people say it smells like cilantro or freshly roasted nuts. Either way, it's an easy, beautiful, hardy grass for a wide range of zones. And it's a great choice for mixed plantings, meadows or prairies, and contemporary landscapes. And also a good choice for green roofs and lawn alternatives. Next is Sporobolus heteroleptus terra or dwarf prairie drop seed. A warm season grass, hardy to zone four, Another great choice for the ground cover or seasonal interest layer in a progressive planting design. 
It's a more compact version of the straight species with fine textured green foliage in a tight vase shape that's shorter and more upright than the species. You still have the same effect in summer with the airy scented seed heads that rise above the foliage, but its blooms are uniform in height. And its shorter stature lends itself to foreground plantings, rock gardens, and borders. It was chosen by Pete Udolf, the world-renowned Lurie Gardens in Chicago's Millennium Park because of these characteristics. This is a selection that was introduced by Roy Diblick of Northwind Perennial Farm in Wisconsin. And it's also a great choice for green roofs, lawn alternatives, or meadow and prairie plantings. Last is Sporobolus ridei, or giant sacaton grass. A warm season grass that's hardy to zone three, it's appropriate for the structural height layer in a progressive planting design. This grass has a very strong presence and it brings to mind exotic and fanciful plantings. It has an arching foliage topped with long foot to two foot long blooms. It's a Southwest native that does very well in the Southeast it's a great specimen plant or an accent in mixed planting, and it's highly and it's a highly ornamental solution for erosion on a on a slope. Sporobolus ridei is also an excellent native substitute for miscanth miscanthus species. It's a good choice for bioretention, rain gardens, bioswales, vegetated swales, as well as for erosion control. Moving on to low water use grasses, we've got four nat non-native selections, and not surprisingly, three of those are Mediterranean plants and the other is from Africa. Festuca glauca elijah blue is a landscape and industry stalwart that's a cool season grass hardy to zone four. It's an excellent choice for the ground cover layer as it lends itself to mass plantings. This is one of the most dependable fescues that grows in a tight clump that is less than a foot tall and that highlights its striking color with inflorescences that emerge in June. In the summertime in the south, this plant can suffer and die back. So it does better in cooler climates and in our mountains of North Carolina it's outstanding in a container and it provides a bright accent in container plantings as well as on perennial borders. A mutation of Elijah Blue is Festuca glauca beyond blue, another blue fescue that originated in Europe that grows in a neat, tight mound with cascading fine textured foliage. It's a great ground cover and it does it's outstanding in containers as well. It's more tolerant of heat and humidity than Elijah Blue, and it does withstand poor soil, but it does require good drainage for it to look its best. Moving on to Helictotrichon sempervirens sapphire or blue oak grass. It's another cool season grass, hardy to zone four, appropriate for the ground cover or seasonal interest mid height layer. It stands out as a grass with deep blue foliage that grows a little bit taller than the festucas with a rounded sculpted look in the landscape. Seed heads emerge in late spring and are topped with tan oat-like blooms uh, that rise above the foliage. This does prefer full sun and well-drained locations and can be grown in containers. It's also reported to have improved resistance to rust. The last of our low water use non-native grasses is Molinus nervoglumus savanna, or savanna ribby grass. It's a warm season grass, hardy to zone eight, appropriate for the seasonal interest and mid-height layer in a progressive planting design. I love the foliage of this grass. It's soft, light, bluish and green, and has great movement. It's wonderful to touch, and is a great grass for a sensory garden. In early summertime, deep pink burgundy hued seed heads emerge, the, emerge above the foliage and they're extremely persistent. 
The only issue for us and for many people in the U.S. is that it's not very cold hardy. So it's treated as an annual in most locations. It does thrive in containers with well-drained media, so it's a good choice for that application. Moving on to our, our drought tolerant native grasses, we've got 15 of those, starting with Andropogon girardii, or big blue stem. It's a warm season grass, hardy to zone three, and a great choice for the structural height layer in a planting design. This is the state grass of Illinois and Missouri, and it's a native grass of the Midwestern prairie. It's sort of been rediscovered as a useful and beautiful landscape plant. It has fantastic foliage that changes from blue-green and silvery blue in the summer to red, orange, and purple in the fall when the seed heads emerge. And those seed heads have the interesting characteristic of looking like upside-down turkey feet, and the anthers on the inflorescences look like ye little yellow bells hanging down. It's a beautiful, striking grass that's functional and provides ecosystem services. Birds eat the seeds, mammals use it for cover, for foraging, and it serves as a larval host for certain butterfly species. Next is Carex Appalachica or Appalachian Sedge. A cool season sedge hardy to zone three, a great choice for the ground cover layer. It's a graceful native sedge for mass plantings, slopes, as well as for lawn alternatives. It's native to woodlands in the U.S. from Maine to South Carolina and east to Kentucky. It's a true clump grower that has narrow, foot-long foliage that grows in a sweeping mound. That narrow, sweeping foliage offers tremendous movement in the landscape when this is planted in mass. It's found naturally in dry to mesic deciduous forests, and it does best with some shade, particularly in warmer regions. It's a great lawn alternative as long as it's planted in dry to average soil. Another sedge, Carex bicknellii or Bicknell sedge, is cool season, hardy to zone three, appropriate for the seasonal interest and mid-height layer. It's a North American native that can be found in the eastern half of Canada and south to Kansas. It grows in dry and moist prairies, open woodlands and rocky areas, and it tolerates dry locations better than many sedges. So it's useful for rain gardens, meadows, and areas where drought tolerant plants are required. It grows in tufts of green, narrow grass-like foliage and spreads via rhizomes. The seed heads are interestingly copper colored and oval shaped that appear in spring and provide seeds and food for songbirds. It's also very deer resistant. So that's a good consideration for your maintenance plan. Up next, one of our most popular plants in Carex Pennsylvanica, a cool season sedge hardy to zone four, another ground cover layer planting choice. It has narrow, long, low growing foliage that forms a lush green carpet over time. It spreads slowly by rhizomes and is most effective when planted in masses. It's perfect for woodland gardens or shady areas but doesn't mind being planted in the sun in cooler climates if it gets sufficient moisture. It's a great pollinator plant and supports several caterpillar species. It also provides shelter and nesting material for birds and remain, remains semi-evergreen in most locations. It's a graceful little sedge that's found in meadows and forests from Maine to Alabama and into the Dakotas. Carex texensis is another cool season sedge, hardy to zone five, and an excellent choice for the ground cover layer in a progressive planting design. This is a good looking multi-purpose native sedge that has bunches of fine textured leaves. This tough sedge can form a ground cover over time and will benefit from stepping stones for constant co crossings of foot traffic. It's valuable for naturalization and restoration, and it performs in both moist soil and dry shade. And as you can see in this picture on the slide, this planting of Carex texensis is bounded by at least three sides of concrete and asphalt. This is a site that's getting a lot of radiant heat, 
and there's no irrigation installed at this site, and Carrick's Texensis is thriving. It's also a good choice for green roofs as well. Next is one of my favorite grasses in Chasmanthium latifolium, a warm season grass hardy to zone 5, a good choice for the seasonal interest or mid-height layer. It's known as river oats or northern sea oats. It does produce a lot of beautiful pale green seeds in midsummer uh, that look like seed heads of Uniola pectinata, but they're not related at all. The foliage is fine textured and has uh, elements of bamboo in terms of texture and movement. This is a real workhorse of a grass. It does well in just about any situation, sun, shade, moisture dry, and it's one of the grasses that provides a solution for areas of dry shade. It does spread, so bear that in mind for your management plan or your landscape. But if you're more interested in persistence in the landscape over time, this can be a great choice. Next is the little known Chasmanthium laxum or slender wood oats, a warm season grass hardy to zone five, appropriate for the seasonal interest or mid height layer. It thrives in rich woods, meadows, and swamps. It has a delicate habit and arrow shaped persistent seed heads that lend a subtle beauty and movement to this grass. Next is Deschampsia cespitosa or tufted hair grass, a cool season grass that's hardy to zone four and is appropriate for the ground cover, seasonal interest, and mid-height layer. It grows in a tufted mound of narrow foliage that's semi-evergreen where winters are mild. It sends up long stalks in early summers that are topped by a multitude of airy, light green inflorescences. Flowers are more abundant in northern climates, and it may not bloom in the southeast and warmer regions. Large groups of plantings can be used as a ground cover, and it can be found in moist areas such as bogs and woodlands. It's a great choice for bioretention and rain gardens as well as green roofs and lawn alternatives. Deschampsia cespitosa gold tau, or golden tufted hair grass, is a cultivar of Deschampsia cespitosa, and it shares a lot of the same attributes with the species. Clump growing, semi-evergreen, fine textured leaf, thin stems topped with sprays of airy delicate flowers, but it has a twist. It blooms in color and seed heads emerge from dark green stems and chartreuse yellow, eventually changing to bronze. The seed heads are persistent and can last throughout winter, making it a good choice for cut flower arrangements. It's a great choice as a contrast when planted in masses with sedges, ferns, and hosta, and adds dimension, texture, and a breezy quality to the landscape. Deschampsia flexuosa, or crinkled hair grass, is another cool season grass hardy to zone four, appropriate for the ground cover, seasonal, or mid-height layer. It has billowy masses of tiny bronze to purple colored panicles that are extremely persistent. It has vibrant green, thin leaves that grow to about a foot and a half. It's undemanding about soil or water and is happy in shade to part sun it's a really good choice for naturalizing, and when planted in mass it, masses, it is really spectacular when the wind catches those open panicles. It's a good choice for restoration and landscape projects that require a native ornamental grass. We have it on good information that it does well on green roofs as well as in a matrix planting. In the south, this grass is going to benefit from the afternoon shade as it tends to suffer in full sun conditions in our climate. Moving on to Aragrostis spectabilis, or purple lovegrass. This is a very tough, warm season grass that's hardy to zone six, a great choice for the ground cover layer and a progressive planting design. This is a native grass that's found in areas of disturbance and abandoned sites. It grows in open fields and meadows throughout the eastern U.S. and Canada, 
It's a really tough little plant. We often see it used for median plantings as well as in hell strips. One of the things I love about Aragrasis spectabulus is when it's in bloom and the sun catches those blooms in the golden hour, it lights up and it looks like little puffs of cotton candy throughout the landscape. It's really amazing. It does reseed. And the seed heads will break off and form little tumble tumbleweeds across the landscape in the fall. But again, thinking about your maintenance plan, that can be a feature if you're looking for grasses that are going to be persistent in the landscape over time. Aerogrostis spectabilis is a good choice for green roofs and lawn alternatives, as well as for meadow and prairie plantings. We grow 12 panicum varieties, ranging in height from 2 to 8 feet, with habits ranging from vase to upright to tight, and foliage ranging from green to red and blue and purple with pink seed heads. There's probably a panicum that will fit your needs regardless of the situation. All of these are warm season grasses, hardy to zone four, and are appropriate for the seasonal interest and mid height layer, as well as the structural height layer. One of the best known panicums is heavy metal. It's a favorite due to its dramatic metallic blue foliage with pink tint tinted airy blooms that appear in July and serve as a great backdrop to other grasses and perennials. It looks stunning in masses and provides a focal point when used as a specimen. It's an easy choice for meadows and naturalized areas, and it's not picky about soil. It's one of the oldest and most well-known blue cultivars of Panicum. Another extremely popular choice is Panicum Northwind, which is a dependable, upright and beautiful blue-green panicum that has a really upright habit that sets it apart from other switchgrasses. It's drought tolerant, but doesn't mind occasional boggy soil, so it's a good choice for rain gardens as well. Panicum Northwind is another introduction by Roy Diblick of Northwind Perennial Farm in Wisconsin. It's such a great grass that it won the Perennial Plant of the Year Award in 2014. Winners are selected for their ability to perform well in a wide range of growing climates, low maintenance needs, multi-season interests, and being relatively pest and disease free. We grow 10 varieties of Schizocarium, Scoparium, and cultivars, ranging in height from two to four and a half feet tall, with habits ranging from loose branching to tight columnar with foliage ranging from blue, green, red, orange, and pastels. But all of these schizocariums have brilliant white inflorescences in the fall. Standing Ovation is one of the better known schizocarium because it resists flopping more than others. All schizocarium can flop with too much fertility or water, but Standing Ovation remains upright and tall. Standing Ovation also carries the Handpicked for You certification. That certification promises better reliability and performance in the landscape, and it was introduced by our friends at North Creek Nurseries in Landenburg, Pennsylvania. All the little blue stems share a kaleidoscope of fall colors as the foliage progresses from blues to greens to oranges and reds. They're all quick to establish, so they're perfect for banks, slopes, and restorations. They also provide shelter and nesting material to wildlife and attract birds and pollinators. If you don't have little blue stem in your landscape or in your nursery program, this is one that you should strongly consider adding. Little blue stem is also the state grass of Kansas and Nebraska. Up next is Sorgastrum newtons, or yellow prairie grass, a warm season grass that's hardy to zone four, a great choice for the structural height layer. It was one of the major tall grasses of the North American prairie, and it's considered to be one of the most beautiful because of its intricate, dazzling flower structures that grow above a mounding two-foot arching shape. 
Sorgastrum newtons attract songbirds and provide shelter for game fowl. It's a wonderful drought tolerant grass from prairie meadows and backgrounds. It's the state grass of Oklahoma and South Carolina and is also an excellent native option or substitute for Calamagrasis Carl Forrester in the Southeast because it does handle our hot, humid conditions extremely well. Sorgastrum newtons Indian Steel or Blue Prairie Grass is a seed cultivar of Sorgastrum newtons, so it's also a warm season grass, hardy to zone four, and a great choice for the structural height layer. But its steel blue foliage with hints of light green is striking and sets it apart from the species. It shares the similar intricate dazzling seed heads but it has a little bit more refined look with that blue-green foliage. Like the species, it attracts songbirds and provides shelter for game fowl, and it's a great choice for natural areas or modern designs that demand sort of a structured form and texture. There are seven drought-tolerant non-native grasses to cover. First up is Cordidaria celoana, or pampas grass. A warm season grass hardy to zone seven, that's a great choice for the structural height layer. It's still the king of Southern landscapes and has long been planted in the South at the entrance of driveways. You often see it planted in threes around mailboxes and in large gardens. It's truly ornamental and it's giant. It's a beautiful, beautiful striking grass with long lasting blooms. It's suited for the heat of the South because it's native to the South American plains or pampas, where temperatures soar and winds blow constantly. This grass does benefit from being cut back in the wintertime. And if you're lucky enough to have that task, you'll want to make sure you're wearing protective clothing because this grass will cut you. Next is Lamus arenarius blue dune or blue lime grass, a cool season grass hardy to zone four, I put this in the ground cover and seasonal interest or mid height layer because the blooms rise above the blue foliage. It's native to Western Europe where it can be found in the sand dunes, but it can also be found in rich soil. It does spread via rhizomes, so place it where you want it. It's a great choice for a tall ground cover and it does particularly well on hillsides for controlling erosion. We grow 13 varieties of miscanthus, ranging in height from 3 to 12 feet, with habits from up by upright vase and mounded with very fine to medium foliage texture, each with a distinctive feature. They're warm season grasses and hardiness varies by selection, ranging from zone 4 and 5. These are great choices for the seasonal interest and mid height and structural height layer. Bandwidth is an appealing compact miscanthus that has narrow foliage with green and gold bands. It's bred to be highly infertile and was developed at North Carolina State University to have increased resistance to rust. Bandwidth was awarded the Handpicked for Use certification, which promises better reliability and performance in the landscape. Miscanthus gracilimus has been an industry standard for decades. It's known for its thin bladed leaves and elegant form. It has narrow silver veined foliage that creates a pleasing symmetrical vase shape with long stems that produce beautiful fan like reddish colored blooms that rise above the leaves. The flowers turn silvery white as they mature and the foliage becomes a striking auburn gold color after the first frost. Gracilimus maintains its shape throughout winter, and it does provide habitat for birds as well. Miscanthus giganteus, as the name describes, is a very large warm season grass that's hardy to zone four, appropriate for the structural height layer or used as a screen or blind. It grows to 10 feet tall, and when the blooms emerge, they add another two feet making this the tallest grass that we grow. The fall colors on this grass are amazing. They're a burnt orange that fades to tan as winter approaches. It's bred to be sterile. And if you're planning on planting Miscanthus giganteus as a screen or accent, 
make sure you give it plenty of room to spread because it does spread via rhizomes and it may be really difficult to dig up once it's mature. We grow 11 Penicetum varieties ranging from one foot to five feet tall with habits ranging from compact to vase and blooms ranging from white, cream, and pink, each with a distinctive feature. These are all warm season grasses and hardiness varies by selection, ranging from zone five to nine. These are great choices for the ground cover or seasonal interest and structural height layer. One of the best known fountain grasses is Penicetum hamlin. It's a best seller and it's also one of the best performers in the landscape. It's small enough to fit compact spaces, but large enough with its two foot fountain shape and bottle brush blooms to command your attention in the landscape. You often see Penicetum hamlin planted at the entrance of neighborhoods and subdivisions, as well as corporate headquarters, because it transforms ordinary edges into lush borders. It also works well in decorative containers, either as the main attraction or combined with contrasting plants. Penicetum oriental Carly Rose is a warm season grass, hardy to zone six, and an excellent choice for the seasonal interest, mid height, and structural height layer. There's something about Carly Rose for just about everybody. Whether you're a nursery person, a gardener, or a landscape professional, it's quick to establish, has spectacular long lasting pink blooms and deep green foliage that grows in an upright shape. Finally is Cecilaria autumnalis or autumn more grass, a cool season grass hardy to zone four. It's a great choice for the ground cover or seasonal interest and mid height layer. This is a grass that is featured heavily on the High Line in New York City. It's a clumping, cool season grass that starts off slowly, but by midsummer, silvery white inflorescences emerge and hover above the foliage. When planted in mass, it's a lush and beautiful look. It's good looking, uncomplicated, robust, great for small spaces, as well as a good choice for a green roof or a lawn alternative. We have a lot of resources available to help you design resilient landscapes, whether they're low water use or drought tolerant. Our catalog is a great reference guide and resource. Our website has lots of information and in plant details. We have great downloadable PDFs and resources that can help you make good choices for your landscape or nursery program. Our availability is loaded every day on our website. You can download that or sign up for our email list on the website. But our greatest resource is our friendly, knowledgeable team. We're here to lend our expertise to help you guide you make good choices for low water use and drought tolerant landscape designs. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate the opportunity to present this information to you, and I hope that you learned something from this and are able to use it in your next landscape design or your nursery program. Thank you.